In this video, we're gonna show you one, two, three different ways to connect an external compressor to your audio mixer. The method that works best for you will largely depend on the audio mixer that you're using and the connectivity options that your audio mixer has. So if one of these options doesn't work for you, do stay and follow along to the end because hopefully the other two or the last option at the end will work best for you and your setup. Now everybody always asks what equipment we're using, so we're just gonna cover that right off the bat. Right now you're listening to the Rode NT1 condenser microphone. This is the fifth gen version of that microphone. It's connected to the Rodecaster Pro 2 off the screen. This is the setup that you're gonna be listening to for the majority of the video as we're showing you all our other connectivity options. Beside this, we have the Lewitt LCT 440 Peer. This is the microphone that we're gonna be connecting to these audio mixers and to the compressor to make sure that the methods that we're showing you in this video works. Next, for the compressor in this video, we're using the Golden Age Project Comp 54 Mark III. This is a great little compressor. It's one that we're using a lot right now. For method one, we're using the Mackie Pro FX 10V3. For method two, we're using the Yamaha MG12XU. And for method three, we're using the Yamaha MG10XU. If you are looking for pricing or specs for any of the equipment that you see here or any of the cables or adapters that we use later in the video, we do have links to everything that you see here from a variety of online retailers. So if you are looking to get the best price possible, our links down in the description below will help you do that. Okay, so for method one here, we're gonna be using what's known as an insert. You can see here at the top of the channel strip that it says insert, and then there's a quarter inch jack associated with that label. You might find this on the back of your audio mixer, but either way, it's typically found aligned with the each channel strip because it's a way of inserting an external piece of equipment into that channel strip. So how this generally works is your microphone will come in at the top of the channel, you set your preamp exactly how you want it, make sure that you're getting signal, you unmute your channel, and you set your level. Once you've done all those fundamentals, then you would go about connecting your inserted piece of equipment. Now to do that, you would use a cable like this. These are sometimes called an insert cable, and sometimes they're called a quarter inch TRS to dual quarter inch TS jack. How this works is this one jack that has three sections on it, as a tip, a ring, and a sleeve, will take out and return the audio signal from your external piece of equipment. Your black quarter inch jack here that has two sections, the tip and the sleeve, this will be your input into your compressor and the red with the tip and the sleeve will be the return that comes from the output of your compressor back into your channel. So let's go ahead and connect this now. So we connect this insert into our audio mixer. We take the black jack. Sometimes these are gray, sometimes these are white. The important part here is that the red one is connected to the output. So I have a black jack. I'm gonna connect that to the input on my compressor. I'm gonna take the red quarter inch jack here and connect that to the output of my compressor. Now you can see here, I already have some compressor settings dialed in. This isn't a video on how to use a compressor and how to dial it in and tweak it. What we're looking for here is as I move the microphone close to my mouth, you can see that the compressor is working and that the VU meter is jumping on the compressor. So if you have an insert on your audio mixer, this is by far the easiest and most efficient way to connect an external compressor to your audio mixer. Okay, so if you don't have an insert on your audio mixer, option one will not work for you. So let's look at option two. Option two is a great option to add an external compressor to a microphone channel. It does have some downsides though. It has two downsides. One, it's gonna burn two channels on your audio mixer. And the other downside is that it's gonna burn one of your auxiliary outputs. Now this method only works if one of your auxiliary outputs can be pre-fader. Let's walk through how you set this up. So you connect your microphone. I turned on phantom power because I'm using a condenser microphone. I set my gain here. If I hit PFL, I can make sure that my gain is set appropriately for the microphone and turn PFL off now. Now as we work down the channel strip here, you can see that aux one has a button beside it that allows me to make aux one as pre-fade. So I wanna press that button down because that means that I can leave this fader down. What we're trying to do here is we want this one channel strip to not go through the main stereo mix. We want this one channel to only go through an aux output. And then as we go down our channel strip here, you want to make sure it's on. Some audio mixers say mute, Yamaha say on, so I clicked it on. The fader is all the way down. 
I unclicked the stereo mix button because I don't want it to go to the stereo mix. If you turn the fader down on an audio mixer that doesn't have the stereo button, that works just the same. And I unchecked PFL. Now, as we take a look at the aux send here, you could tell that I turned up that I want to send aux send and I put it right to that triangle position, that zero or unity. So we're not changing the volume of this channel. We're relying mostly on the preamp at the top of this channel strip to set the volume of this channel. Then as we work our way all the way down through this aux send, you can see that our aux one main stereo output is turned up to the triangle position or zero or unity. Some audio mixers have faders for this. Some have different routing or different options, but the gist of it is you want to turn up your aux send, make sure it's pre-fade, and then make sure that you're actually sending out of your auxil auxiliary output. Okay, so now that we have that set up, we need to send from our audio mixer to our compressor. So let's do that. So use a quarter inch balanced TRS cable here. We're going to take it from our aux one send. You can see up here at the top of the audio mixer it says aux one send. So we're going to send that into our compressor. So I'm going to connect that quarter inch jack to the input of our compressor. Next, we're going to need another quarter inch TRS cable, exactly the same as the first one. We're going to connect one of these ends from the output of our audio compressor. Then we're going to connect the other end of this cable to one of the line level inputs on our audio mixer. Now for me, I don't like wasting these stereo pairs, so I'm just going to connect this to channel two on the audio mixer. Now, as you can see, I have the fader turned up to Unity, the channel is turned on, I'm sending it to the stereo output, and I didn't need to use any type of gain on the preamp or whatever because we are coming line level from the compressor. If we look over at the compressor, you can see that the VU meter is doing its job, it's compressing the audio, and it's going straight out the stereo output to our Broadcaster Pro 2, which you're hearing right now. So this is the next best option if you don't have an insert on your audio mixer. But again, the downsides are that you burn two channels for your microphone and you burn an aux output. So what happens if your audio mixer doesn't have an insert? The Yamaha MG10XU doesn't have an insert. Or if you don't have an aux send that's pre-fade, the Yamaha MG10XU doesn't have an aux send that's pre-fade. Or if you just don't want to burn two channels. If that's the case, for option three here, you really don't have any choice other than to use an external microphone preamp. So how this would work is you'd take your microphone and then you connect it into your microphone preamp. You set your gain on your microphone preamp, make sure it's coming all the way through your output, and then you connect your microphone preamp to your compressor, and then you connect your compressor to your audio mixer, and then it'll just take up a single channel. So let's do that now. I already have the microphone connected to the preamp and the preamp's already going. Next, let's connect that microphone preamp into the compressor. So I'm gonna take the line level output. I'm gonna use a quarter inch TRS cable here to go from the output of my microphone preamp to the input on the back of this compressor. Then I'm gonna use another quarter inch TRS cable here. And I'm using quarter inch TRS on purpose because we're taking a line level signal into our audio mixer now. So we do want to make sure that we're using a quarter inch line level input. You can see here it's balanced, so it has three sections, the tip, the ring, and the sleeve. And then we're going to take the output of our compressor, connect that, and connect this to channel one. So if we follow the signal the whole way along, you can see that our microphone preamp is set correctly. Then you can see that the VU meter is compressing on the compressor. Then it's coming into our audio mixer here. Nothing is peaking, clipping, or distorting. Now you shouldn't have to use the preamp on your audio mixer if you're doing this. That's the whole point of using an external preamp is that you don't have to lean on the preamp that's on your audio mixer. And then you set your level. It comes out the output. And that's what you're listening to now. You're listening to the Lewitt LCT 440 peer going through that whole signal chain that we just described. So this is option three. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for any of the equipment in this video, we have links down below. If you have any questions or comments or something wasn't quite explained clearly, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.